Hey, I'm Mitchell Baxter, I'm a cinematographer, and today I'm gonna to be breaking down a scene from the short film, Wildflower, directed by Heather Colazzo. Are you hurt? I'm fine. You know, it's been nearly 10 years. It starts with like this low angle looking up at Essen. Um, she, it's kind of like a, it's, it works as a close up, but it also works as like an establishing shot for the film. Um, you're understanding just in this shot, uh, her background, like where she just came from. And so I think one thing to think about, like as a DP is like every scene, even if it's like only a couple shots has like, uh, has the shot that's going to tell the story. Like, um, and in this case, it was this shot of the ring that she's taking off. So. Um, for me, I really wanted to, uh, you know, hype up the, the power of what that ring possessed and doing that was kind of like through a low angle and making it feel like there was a lot of power um, towards what she was looking at. This was actually like all shot in this really beautiful home um, on a lake in Burnaby called uh, the Baldwin House. Um, it had a lot of challenges though because it's basically all windows. like every part of it is windows. There's like very few walls. So as you can imagine as a DP, that's a lot of, of stuff to manage. Shots like this, where you just have like tons of window light, it's very difficult to control your exposure because you're, you know, just have such a high contrast. So we got really lucky because in this particular instance, um, it was during the wildfires. And so there's actually, you can see like all of this here is just like wildfire smoke. Um, and that kind of allowed us to like soften the background and like match that exposure a little bit better. Um, but yeah, in most cases, really that's a, a challenging thing to do because you need to bring the interior exposure up in order to compensate for how bright it is outside. My key grip, um, Tom on this film, did this really cool thing though we talked about in prep because we knew there was gonna be so many windows to be like battling. Um, he rigged like this really cool system all throughout the house with pulleys and um, it was like 20 foot pipe so that at any instance we could block out a window from the from the roof basically and that allowed us like a lot of control um which we'll kind of dive into here so shots like this like i was able to you know block out a lot of the windows that were any kind of this part of the frame or this left side of the camera so that you get that nice shape on her face mm -hmm. and a lot of this was like natural light i think all we really did was added like you know maybe some sort of light here that would like give us a little pop in the eyes. But most of the time, like it was, it was, uh, you know, kind of just shaping the natural light that's there. And I think that's a good point to talk about because on, on a lot of like films like this, when you don't have like crazy budgets, you have to be really, really creative about how you maximize your budget. Um, it'd be a lot more expensive to rent like several lights and just light this like crazy where it was a lot cheaper in our, in our case to rent a lot of uh, grip equipment. And that just kind of like allowed us to, um, you know, maximize what we were capable of doing by just shaping what was kind of already naturally occurring in this space. This is kind of a cool one to talk about. Uh, me and the director really talked about like symmetry and how we could uh, use that a lot in the film um, to kind of show her, you know, cloning herself and this, this kind of idea of self-reflection. This is a, always a tricky kind of uh, scenario to be in as a DP is like when you have uh, a two shot of two people kind of like looking at each other because it's tough to um, light well. You have to kind of do this thing called cross keying where you um, you know, need a light basically to come in and hit her here and another light to come in and hit here uh, as well and make it feel natural. So in this case, the, the references and a lot of what we talked about uh, fall more a little bit more into like the naturalistic realm. So I didn't want it to look, you know, that perfect per se. Um, and then, so in this case, we, we actually did choose to just keep the window side. So the side that Essen's on, this is Zinnia here. Um, here, this is Zinnia and this is Essen. So uh, we, we chose to keep basically Essen's side a little darker just so it would feel a little bit more naturalistic because there is uh, windows basically here. So that really just lit um, 
here's like a close up for example. Um, this was really about, you know, I think lighting, everyone has a different opinion, but like lighting for me is really about eyes. I think that performance and like how you read people is through their eyes. So I'm a big fan of eye light and like what the uh, impacts that can have on an audience. And like, you know, for example, Godfather is like one of the most, you know, influential films for that case because Gordon Willis chose not to light uh, some eye lights with some eye lights and that gave that feeling, uh, that feeling in that film that's like, so discomforting in some um, scenes or uncomfortable in some scenes. Um, so yeah, like for this film though, it was like, it wasn't that, it wasn't The Godfather. So we, we, we did want that eye light, we really want that sparkle in their eyes. Um, and so I always kind of made a point of taking the time to make sure that like we, we got that sparkle in the eyes. Um, yeah, jump over to this shot. So another theme of this film was like, um, you know, what, uh, what these women are up against is they've basically escaped this male society and they've gone to this home and they're trying to kind of live their own life now out in the woods. And um, something we talked about a lot of was like, how could we have an active antagonist throughout the film um, that, you know, we can feel in the images, even when there isn't like an actual person there. Um, and to me that uh, exemplified in the case of shooting from outside the house versus shooting inside the house. So a lot of this film um, is, takes place inside the house, but there's very select moments such as like when they first arrive or this moment in the film where she suddenly thinks someone's come and found them that we cut outside the house. And that was to really drive home this idea of the outside world coming to them um, and them all of a sudden being kind of encroached on. So, um, you know, Again, this is one of those shots we kind of worked to in the scene, um, and that jump felt very justified from a from a uh, a uh, story perspective to be outside of the, the the house all of a sudden to feel that kind of external pressure. I can't remember who said it. It's like a famous quote, but like a great film is three incredible scenes and no bad scenes. That's what a good film is. So I think it's really important to understand as a DP to pick your battles because there's certain scenes that you may not be happy with, but as long as like the film is okay or like what you're expressing in that scene makes sense, then it's, the film will be good. And I think it's really what being a good DP is understanding when are those, when is that like three or four, when are those three or four great scenes? When do you need to push? When do you need to fight for something because you truly believe like it'll be the difference of the movie? Um, and that those are I think I think those are the things you have to fight for, and I and I to your point like I think when something doesn't go to, to to plan or like maybe not how you saw it I think it's important to like yeah analyze it more as like well how important is that in like the grand scheme of the film I mean and kind of weigh weigh those weigh those things.